Hello, and welcome to a live Kerfefe break on the program with Carrie Smith. I am your host, Carrie, and I'm still reporting for any regular viewers here. I see some of you in the chat. Hello. Still reporting from the temporary location upstairs with the um, blown out lights and everything, but that's going to be rectified soon. Um, maybe I can take the camera down there and show you the studio, what we've been doing we are in the home stretches of finishing the deprogram studio. The floors are done. We started putting some furniture in there. I just need, we have to have an electrician come and put a new outlet in so that I can hook everything up uh, where I'm going to, because there's no outlet there. And, uh, and then we also have to do, I still have to do the curtains and we have, I mean, you know, the little things that are left, we have to install the light fixture and we have to I have to finish some more caulking now that we've added replacement baseboards and I have to uh, touch up some of the bad caulk job that I previously did. There are little things that need to be done, but nothing, ma nothing major. It's almost done. And I'm so excited to get down there. Thank you to everyone who supports the channel. If you contribute at any level, uh, at even a dollar a month helps and has helped uh, me to, to, to do the studio. We're going to be getting a new camera because this one sucks. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. And, uh, yeah, just thank you guys very much. Uh, it's a nice start to a new year. So yes, Adam says like Michelangelo working on the Sistine Chapel, it will take time. Yes. But, uh, Saturday night, I, I got some of the stuff that's going to go, be going into the studio and went ahead and we put it in there. My old, uh, 1937 radio. We got this, we, we have this beautiful Grunau radio that was, they were, it was called a Shirley temple radio and our friend, uh, Ken refurbished it, restored it, got it to working, replaced the tubes in it. It still works with the tubes in the back and, um, and it's beautiful. He, he made it so beautiful. So that's, we've moved that in there. There's, um, it's, it's basically, I just want it to feel like a, a Victorian salon for guests. If they come, you know, there's a couch and all that area for, for people to do in studio things. So it's going to be so exciting and I'm tired. We are tired. <laughs> Last night, Anthony had a show in Lukenbach. That was cool. I know some people from the chat said they're coming out to see one of his shows. He's He and his band are playing there every Sunday at Lukenbach, Texas. And if you're in Texas and it, you've never been to Lukenbach, it's worth it. If you, What are you doing? You have to come check it out. So maybe come one of these Sundays. Let me know which Sunday you're coming if you come. He's playing there um, every Sunday this month, one to five. And uh, so we that was, uh, that was last night. And we're tired from that too. But... We're here today. Welcome. That was kind of a rambling intro. Welcome. I have an update on a couple things. Adam says, big shout going out to Christopher the Mysterious. I like the way, I like that new phrasing of his name. And I did see someone else, I, I don't know where it's at now, but someone said they miss Mystery Chris. And I, I do too. And I wanted to tell you Mystery Chris is going to be back this week. And I'm not sure if we're going to do it at the regular pop culture time yet. I've got to check with him because uh, there might be a conflict that night. But in any case, we are doing a pop culture this week. And I've really missed him. I know the regular viewers, if you know who he is and you know the pop culture show, you guys have missed him and uh, can't wait to have him back. So that's going to be cool. Okay. Today's show. Yeah, MC Returns is exciting. Oh, a few other announcements, the things I always forget to do. If you like the show, please consider hitting like, subscribe. Um, we don't have any sponsors. We, uh, our sponsorship is you guys. If you like the show, you put the, put, put your money towards something you enjoy, then you are free to do that. If you can't do that or don't want to do that, um, sharing the video, liking the video, leaving comments helps us grow the channel with the algorithm. So that's also helpful. And, uh, and you can support us if you want to on Locals, Patreon, Subscribestar, or uh, here at YouTube. Those are the places. So thank you guys so much. I saw some people in the chat saying it's a slow day. Yeah, it feels I've gotten to a slow start with all the work we, we did on the room last week. It's 
this morning was a little bit of a slow start doing admin stuff. So, um, okay. Today's topic. I'm going to be talking about pronouns and compelled language and policing of language. And the reason I decided to talk about that is someone on my Instagram asked me, do you have a standalone video about this where you've talked about it? And I've talked about it several times, but I can't remember in which of these rambling episodes, live episodes, it's come up with guests. And so I figured, why don't we just dedicate an episode to it? And maybe I'll get something from this that I can clip that I can refer people to if they are curious. But, um, uh, yeah, I just, I want to talk about pronouns and compelled speech. So as many of you know, and maybe you're like me, I get called all kinds of things. I get called far right. I get called uh, right winger, maggot, maggot. That's their pun, maggot. Um, I get called a lefty. I get called a turf, which means trans exclusionary radical feminist. That's a, a a phrase that people who support social justice and woke ideology, my old ideology, people who support the transgender part of that whole ideology, they call those of us who oppose transing kids or oppose gender ideology, they call us transphobes. And they call us TERFs, trans exclusionary radical feminists. So I get called a TERF. However, I also frequently get called the opposite. I get called a trans enabler and I get called a, a, a Pharisee and uh, someone who, who enables transgender people and enables gender ideology. So that has been happening in the past couple of weeks. Again, it has been renewed. And the reason was because, um, th this comes up every few months or so, but this time it came up in particular because someone who follows me about a month or so ago became really angry that I use the she pronoun when referring to Blair White here. Let me just pull up this picture. I'll just show you. And so this person who I don't know in real life, have never met, but have messaged with before, uh, and they started not just leaving incessant comments about it, upset that I, that I would use the she pronoun for Blair White, but also calling me on Facebook. I didn't even know that was a thing. And now that I know, I'm going to try and figure out how to disable that, but calling me through Facebook Messenger phone calls and then following up the calls with text messages on the on the same platform you know please answer please i just need to talk to you about this and and just sort of harassing me <laughs> and demanding my time and attention and demanding me demanding of me that i make the same choices they make and uh, so i did a post about that trying to explain my point of view and trying to explain um uh, the problem that I have with controlling people. So that person, for example, is not the first one who's done that. And I don't think it's the majority of the gender, the GC crowd, the gender critical crowd. There's all these acronyms. If you're not online, you may not know them. The GC crowd, that's another term for the people who get called TERFs. There are people who are critical of gender ideology, like I am. So some people call me TERFs, some people call me GC. Well, within the whole group of people, this large umbrella of people who get called GC, it's a lot of, there are a lot of feminists in this group, feminists who don't support trans ideology. And of those feminists, there is a very vocal minority. I don't think it's the majority, but there's a very vocal minority who, in my opinion, are just as dogmatic, just as woke. So, and by woke, I mean uh, they still believe in most of the tenets of the social justice belief system. They still believe that the world is best viewed as this uh, competition for power among identity groups. And they still talk about, you know, the oppressed groups and the, the, the oppressors. And they talk about men being the oppressor and how women are oppressed. And they still use all of the woke language when it comes to sex 
when it comes to that identity group, when it comes to women, but they don't use the woke language when it comes to trans people. And sometimes they've also abandoned it when it comes to race and the other identity categories. Um, but in my opinion, a lot of these people are still in the woke world just, just for women. <laughs> it's like, just for my pet group, just for me. I'm still going to view the world in this woke way when, if it benefits me and I want to view women as this oppressed minority class and, and that we need to redistribute power. Like they still accept a lot of these woke tenants. And again, this isn't all of the GC crowd. This is, I think, a very vocal minority. And so this person who was harassing me is one of these kinds of people. And like I said, I've gotten it before. Um, but they're, they're characterized by a couple of things. They're, it's not their position. It's not their position that's a problem. I have lots of friends who refuse to use cross-sex pronouns or wrong-sex pronouns. I just had an interview with my friend, uh, the famous artist Bertie Rose, on Saturday, who does not use wrong-sex pronouns or cross-sex pronouns for anyone. Um, there are many other people I know who won't who won't do it. I think, I think Josh Slocum from disaffected won't, I'm pretty sure billboard Chris doesn't. There are many people I know who won't some for religious reasons, some who are atheists and won't do it. And it's, so their reason is grounded in some, some in religious beliefs, some in it, not it. So it's, it's a variety of people who won't. I understand that perspective and I sympathize with it. And I think, it, I think it's a good perspective and I think they make good they make good arguments for why they won't. And I'd actually like to have a conversation. I've had conversations offline, but I'd like to have one on deprogram with someone who disagrees with me on this and who won't ever use wrong sex pronouns because uh, because I think we have mostly common ground. So it's not the position that's a problem. It's the insistence that I adopt the same position. And I say the same words that I have a problem with. Um, I have a problem with controlling people. I have a problem with Puritan-like movements. I have a problem with cancel culture mobs and uh, attempted cancellations. And these people often engage in a lot of the, the same tactics that woke people engage in, which makes sense. Because like I said, I think a lot of them are still in woke when it comes to sex, the category of sex. So here, let me put this on the, the screen. I'll just show you. Let's see. So this is from, uh, this photo is a photo of me and Blair White. I'm not friends with Blair. I've met her a couple of times. I respect what she does. This is from a myth informed conference that I was at a better discourse conference where I moderated a couple of panels and she was one of the panelists and I took this photo and, um, and when I shared it, I said something about her or she, and at the time got lots of these types of people, you know, sort of, uh, coming after me. And then, then recently, this has been renewed for some reason, and this person who I mentioned um, started harassing me with phone calls and messages a month ago about it. And um, and so I posted something about it. And I basically said, you can go and read it if you want, but I said, look, I have lots of friends who won't ever use wrong sex pronouns. I understand that position. I respect that position. Um, but I... I'm not gonna, I don't want to know you if you are a person who demands that I conform to your choice and demands that I uh, not only understand and re respect your opinion, but that I must adopt it. Uh, one of these people in the pylon the past couple of days said to me that um, my words are not my choice, which is absolutely bullshit. That's the whole reason I oppose the transgender compelled speech uh, pronouns thing in the first place. I don't want anyone telling me what words I can and cannot use, what words I must use. No one controls my speech. My words are absolutely my choice. I'm choosing everyone that's coming out of my mouth right now, and I'll continue to do so. And so I guess the first part of this is, 
it helped to post this because there were several of these very um, controlling, the, the vocal minority part of the GC world that um, controlling people who let me know they would be and following me. And I said, great, then this works out. This works out great for both of us because I don't want you near me. I don't want anything to do with you as a person. I think trying to control others is it's a huge red flag. I, you're not a person I can trust. I think it's a red flag for a personality defect at the very least, if not a personality disorder. And so I don't want you around me. So please, <laughs> by all means, leave me alone. The person who was uh, calling me and messaging me, just to t show you how this this they it functions a lot like a woke cancellation mob. This person started incessantly messaging Birdie, who I had on the show on Friday, who they don't know, uh, messaging Birdie and constantly, you know, telling Birdie she had to do something about me. And Birdie said, I don't, I don't control other people's speech. I don't tell other people what they have to say. And then this person said, okay, well, I'm going to tell on you to Posey Parker. Kelly Jean Keen, I'm going to tell on you, which is also weird. We don't have a boss. I don't have a boss. My birdie doesn't have a boss that they can go to to cancel. So it's like, I guess they think who, who do, who do they view as a higher up in the reality movement or the gender critical movement or whatever? Um, so I guess they view Kelly Jean Keen as a higher up. Let me go to the higher up and get you canceled because you won't police carry speech. And it, it's all so juvenile in middle school, which is what these people are like. It's what the woke are like. It's so, uh, I mean, yeah, like censorious, all of that. It's cancel culture. I hate this crap. So I was right to block this person. <laughs> I was right to be like, get out of my life. Stop calling me weirdo. Um, Kelly Jean King is on the record of not telling women what to say or think. That's her whole point is to let women speak. She doesn't use cross-sex pronouns, but she doesn't advocate for telling other women what they must do. So tell whoever you want about me, crazy people. I don't care. Um, I know I'm kind of rambling here about it, but geez. So these are some of the, the, the thoughts I had about it. Um, but so since someone asked when all this was happening, yeah, Dan, <laughs> I'm going to tell on you right? <laughs> You're not saying exactly what I want you to say. So since this was going on online the past few days and, and someone on Instagram said, have you ever done a video about what you think about pronouns? And I said, well, I've talked about it before, but I don't know where. So I figured I'd do one here and try to make it more concise. So um, here, let me just remove this from the screen. When I was in the woke world, when I was in the social justice world, and some of you know that who know my story of, of leaving that world, you'll recognize part of this. But one of the things, it's a this is just part of a long story, but one of the things that really affected me and that I paid attention to at the beginning of waking up was someone sent me a video of Jordan Peterson at the time and they they said he's a they were calling him a transphobe. And I went to the video expecting to see something transphobic. And I didn't. In fact, I saw him making a great argument against compelled speech. And I started listening to more of his videos and he helped me a lot. He actually personally helped me a lot with, uh, I wrote him a letter and he wrote me back about learning to get over my fear. And, um, but, but he was very instrumental in me leaving the woke world. There were other people who were instrumental as well. Um, but one of the things I saw him saying back way back when this was probably two, this was 2016, uh, 2016 and 17. One of the things I heard him saying was his own sort of policy for determining how he uses pronouns. And this is when he was being attacked by mainstream media as, as a transphobe, you know, like, like my friend had said he was. And, and he was saying, I, it's a case by case basis is how I determine what I'm going to say. And, I think my position has become sort of similar. It's a case by case basis. Um, to be clear, in case you don't watch this channel, you're not familiar with me because it seems like a lot of people 
trying to take swipes at me right now or are not, and they don't know my position. So in case you don't know, and you've never seen a, vid a single video on this channel, I do not support gender ideology. I think it's evil. I do not support transing children. Children cannot consent to sterilization or mastectomy. And I think what's currently going on in modern society and this culture is one of the biggest child abuse scandals our generation has ever known. Maybe it is the biggest child abuse scandal. I think that the U S is going to end up going the same way as many of the Scandinavian countries, the very progressive countries have started to go, which is to ban it obviously for children. Children can't consent to, we, we as a society acknowledge children are different than adults. So they can't consent to sex. We don't allow them to do that. Legally, we protect kids in in different ways that we don't protect adults. We don't allow kids to smoke or drink or drive a car or buy a gun or have sex. And yet, these mad scientists, these evil people in society currently are telling us that, yes, children can decide if they want to be sterilized for life, if they want to mangle and mutilate their body, if they want to have their breasts removed, if they want to have a fake penis constructed out of skin from their arm, an open wound, fake vagina that they have to you know, become a permanent medical patient to take care of for the rest of their life. Children can decide that. No, they can't. They can't. And the U.S. is going to go the way of the Scandinavian countries. We're just taking our time getting there, I guess, because there's a lot of leftists who who really don't care about kids or who maybe some of the ones with good intent, I don't know, some of the ones they've gotten swept up in the I, all the manipulation works on them and they really believe like, oh, it's transphobic of me if I don't support this for children. Oh, I don't want to be a transphobe. So I'm just going to go along with what we're doing now, which is cutting body parts off children. So it's taking us a while, but we're going to get there. Yes, Helena, we don't allow them to get tattoos, for goodness sakes. Uh, but we somehow say, yeah, they can decide to have their breasts chopped off. No. So that's my position on gender ideology. It's not a secret. Um, and uh, it's something I talk about pretty frequently. It's one of the things within woke. You know, there's a lot of different horrible things happening at the moment. This is probably the most horrible because of the number of child victims. So I talk about it quite a bit. So that's my position so that you're aware. In my personal uh, life, when I encounter a trans person, or if it's online and there's some public news story, uh, it is a case-by-case -case basis. Like I remember Peterson saying, I rarely use wrong sex pronouns. I never and will never use made up pronouns that attempt to manipulate language. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm never going to use Z or Z or Zen. I don't use the plural pronoun for a person, which is retarded. I will never say they or them in seriousness. I say they, them jokingly. If I, my, if my husband and I are out and if we see a they, them, <laughs> then I say it that way. I saw a they, them in a joking way, but no, I'm never going to do that ever. Um, hold on one second. I do use cross sex pronouns. I do use wrong sex pronouns very rarely. And I saw someone in the middle of this brouhaha on, on Twitter, they were saying, Oh, well, there's all these people. They just, they won't use wrong sex pronouns except for a handful of male influencers that they're afraid of or something. That's what they were trying to say. Like, oh, you're using them because you're afraid of Blair White. Somebody actually said that you're afraid of Blair White. No, I'm afraid of people trying to control my language. Um, and I can't speak for everyone else. Maybe they do make an exception simply for influencers. But I have friends in my personal life who are private people. I have a friend who is trans is what the society would call him. He's someone with gender dysphoria, born a woman, <clears throat> very private person, born a woman, is an adult, as an adult, decided to get surgery done. 
tries to present as a male, is very aware that he has a mental disorder, is very aware that he is a biological woman trying to live as a man, to come off as a man, is not under any delusion that he has actually changed his sex, which is impossible. You cannot change your sex, not even with surgery. Children, <laughs> you cannot change your sex. Um, this is the path that he, he took to get relief for his problems, his hatred of his body. This person I'm using as an example because, no, it's not influencers I'm afraid of. This person is an influencer. This person won't even, probably would never do an interview with me. I have interviewed another private friend, though, who is trans, who's not an influencer. Um, and I use the she pronouns for her, even though she's a biological man. There's a couple of reasons why I do this, and I'll just explain them. I'm not telling anyone else they have to have my position. I don't care what position you have. I have a lot of respect for people who won't ever use them. I'm explaining mine. First of all, there's the matter of when I look at someone, if my brain interprets female and that's what comes naturally to me, like in the case of, let's go back to Blair White for a second, like in the case of Blair White, I do not look at Blair White and see, he, he does not come naturally to me. And I think if you say that it does, you're fooling yourself. Um, it doesn't come naturally. Now, that doesn't mean you can't stop for a second and insist on using he. Go right ahead. But it doesn't come naturally to me, and I'm not going to jump through those hoops to say he when she is what comes naturally. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. It reminds me too much of when I was in the woke cult, and I had that little internal sensor, that social justice sensor of like, oh, don't say that. That'll make someone mad. Or, you know, don't, you've got to do it, phrase it this way. Don't say this pronoun. Don't do that. Don't say spirit animal. That's all on the naughty list. Now, you know, make sure you phrase your speech this way. It was a constant filter that you're putting all of your thoughts and your speech through in a cult. And I'm not going to do that just so that this vocal minority of the gender critical crowd doesn't get mad at me. I'm not going to stop myself from saying what I want to say, which is she, when I see Blair, I'm not going to stop myself from doing that because of fear of what those people will say or think. I'm not going to do it. And if they think the wrong thing about me or they think I'm part of the problem or they think I'm a trans enabler or I'm a part of whatever, fine. Let the, People think the wrong thing, of, so many wrong things about me already. I've gotten used to it. So think the wrong thing about me. But I will not censor myself and what I want to say for you because you say I have to because you say, I'm not a pure enough gender critical person if I don't. I don't care. I'm not trying to be a pure gender critical person. I'm not trying to be a turf. I'm not trying to be left wing or right wing or anything. I'm just me. I'm just a lady who ha happens to say her opinions online. I'm a lady who thinks my old ideology, social justice, is evil, um, who thinks it is an existential threat to Western society, all of society and culture, to our world. And so I speak about it because. I think it is a looming threat. That's what I do. But I'm not trying to be some activist or some whatever label you want to call me. I don't care. Call me that. But don't get upset if I don't live up to the pure idea of what you think that that label is. Because it's your freaking label on me. When people ask me, what movement am I a part of? It's like, I don't even call myself a turf. I mean, I'm fine with people calling me that, but I don't call myself that. I have some turf stickers from turf friends. I have lots of turf friends. Some of them make stickers. I have some of their stickers in my house, but I don't call myself that. Have you not noticed that? I don't care if you call me that, but I don't, I'm a part of the reality movement. That's how I view it. <laughs> I'm just a part of the reality movement. So that's the number one thing there is when I look at someone, if my brain naturally picks a pronoun, I'm usually going to say that one. Unless they are, I know them to be a woke activist, authoritarian, uh, someone who insists on invading women's spaces, like Leah Thomas, I will never call she 
if I knew his real name, I would say it, but I'm also, I don't care enough to go and look up his real name. <laughs> Some people, they care so much. You know, one person actually said to me about Blair, they said, you know, when you, when you met Blair at the conference, you should have asked him his real name and called him that. What? What? No. How do you behave in the world? I don't behave that way. You can do that. I'm not going to do that. And I don't care enough to go look it up. I don't. Um, but, but Leah Thomas, let me not get off topic again. Leah Thomas, that's a great example. I'm never going to use the cross sex pronoun for this person. I'm never going to use it for him because he's, he's lying. He's an authoritarian. I think he's evil. I think what he's doing is evil. I think trying to invade women's sports and steal women's medals from them is a dishonest, um, tactic. I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think he's a weak man. I think he's resentful. And so for people like that, no, I'll never use it. Um, again, it's very few people that I'll use it for. And, and what's, what's the, I'm, I'm thinking now, like, what was the second point? Oh, as long as I know that the person, I mean, it, it's a case by case thing. If I know the person, like my friend who I mentioned, who's a private person, if they're not demanding anything of me and they're not demanding I use the 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 wrong sex pronoun or the cross sex pronoun and they're not pretending that they are actually the opposite sex and they're not pretending that they've somehow changed their sex and they're not part of that whole delusion if they're just something who's like somebody who's like hey I've got a mental illness and this is how I'm choosing to live with it is to is it gives me relief to live as the op, you know, try and present as the opposite sex. If I think they're a good hearted person, that's how I decide. That's how I decide. And so in my personal interactions with people, you know, this, this person who came at me recently was a, uh, not a Christian. They're, they're feminist. They're in, in that part of the, the GC movement. That's, the part that is very controlling. Um, but I have had Christians come at me before about it or, and, and, and one of the things I said to, to one of these people I was talking with is, do you understand? Cause, cause this person really wanted me at the conference to be rude to Blair, uh, to force my brain to do mental gymnastics, to use a pronoun that doesn't come naturally. And to also, when I see Blair, I guess, presumably say, hey, Blair, did you know you're a man? And Blair would say, I guess, yes, I do, because Blair admits that. Um, <laughs> do you, I guess that's the way I'm supposed to interact. These people think I'm supposed to interact with people. Well, I don't interact with people that way. When I see anyone with a sin, a mental illness or a sin, however you want to view it, when I see them... I don't press on that sin. Why would I? If they ask me my thoughts about it, I share it. I've had gay friends ask me my thoughts about gay marriage. I don't hide my opinion. But when I see them, I'm not going up to them like, hey, did you know you're living in sin? So what What are we doing today? You know, like it's not a, because we, I'm, we all have sins that we're dealing with. Do you understand? Like, I don't, if I have a friend who's struggling with gluttony or obesity and I see them, I don't go up to them and say, Hey, what's up? Just wanted you to know you're still fat and you should deal with that. Um, so anyway, let's go do this panel together. Like, I, I don't know how you interact with people that way. And if that works for you and and you find a way to interact with people that way great but i can't do it <laughs> and i would argue that it if i were to behave that way with one specific group of people who have a specific mental illness or sin however you want to view it if I were to act that way with people who get put in the trans category, for example, people with gender dysphoria, if I were to treat them that way, uh, we wouldn't be friends. I wouldn't have friends who are open to coming to church with me, which has happened, and hearing a sermon and hearing God's word, which has happened. 
atheist friends, agnostic friends, a, f a friend with gender dysphoria, Christian friends, like, but Christian, maybe at the beginning of the path, who knows? I, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to welcome people into my faith by being a jerk to them and saying things that don't come naturally to me anyway. So that's the best I think I can explain it now. I'm trying to, <laughs> somebody said, why did Carrie use me as an example? <laughs> I don't know which of the, which of those examples you're supposed to be, <laughs> which one. Um, but I'm trying to articulate this better, I guess. I'll try again. I don't know if this video is going to be a good one for sharing to explain it, but uh, I'll try again. But but that's that's how I decide. I'm not saying anybody else needs to do what I do. I'd, I'm not one of those people who says, oh, you're being mean or rude if you don't use cross-sex pronouns for Blair. I don't believe that, actually. I don't believe you're being mean or rude. I think you may have a, a good reason not for not doing so. And my mind is still open on it, like it is on the legality of abortion, like it is on uh, several different things I've been thinking through for a while. My pastor gave a great sermon about why Christians should not use wrong sex pronouns. It's a great sermon. I have other friends who are not Christian, like like uh, Josh Slocum from the Disaffected Podcast, who've also shared their opinions on this in great posts that gave me a lot to think about. So I don't know, maybe at one point I will choose to, hey, you know what? I've decided I've changed my mind on this. I can't use the wrong sex pronouns. It doesn't matter. I'm never going to use them. And here's why. And, and if that happens, I'll be the first to say so publicly. Here's why I changed my mind. I've changed my mind on many things. But that's not, that's not where I'm at now. I'm telling you where I'm at. <laughs> so that's it. That seemed to me like that might have been a bit rambling, but if you have any questions, if you feel like I'm not clear, if you have questions about it, let me know. I know there are many people in the audience who um, will sometimes use cross-sex pronouns, and there are many people who never will, and I've never felt, never thought from the chat here at D Program that there was anyone being controlling but if you uh, are one of these people, I'll just let you know once again, if you are a controlling person and you can't tolerate the fact or stand the fact that I would call Blair, for example, she, well, then goodbye. Let's part ways if, if you can't tolerate it or stand it, if you don't want to listen to me because of it or if you don't want to follow me or whatever, then great. You don't have to. It's a free country. and. I don't want to get unsolicited phone calls and text messages from you in the middle of the night, begging me to pick up and talk to you and change my words to fit what you want them to be. So there, that's it. I think I'm done. Um, John says, Dion, your quotes are part of the reason I love Carrie's streams. Ah, me too. Dion, the queen of quotes, who's here. Okay, I'm just going to scroll through this and if you if you have a question, I'll see I'll see if I can answer it. AD Victoria Victorium says sometimes the present processing stream of conscious thoughts make the best streams. Oh good. I hope this one was okay. Sometimes you, I've th I've thought through something in my head but I haven't articulated it yet in a concise fashion, so this is me practicing that and it's not concise yet. So um, damn, we were made in the image of God. That's a good reason. It is. Um, oh, one of the things some of the people were saying on Twitter who were upset with me was, uh, just because you call Blair, she doesn't make him a woman. And I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. Blair is not a woman. And me calling Blair, she does not make Blair a woman. I absolutely agree. <laughs> it doesn't. How does this person have Carrie's number? Oh, 
I shouldn't answer that. Apparently there's some function on Facebook where I have to disable it. Don't go calling me there now. Apparently you can call people who are your Facebook friends because I didn't know this and I have to fix it, <laughs> but it was weird. <laughs> and I was like, why is this person, how did they get my number? Okay. Andrew says, the silly thing is that if you didn't know the person, you'd probably use their pronouns if they pass reasonably well. Yeah, that too. I mean, one of my friends who has gender dysphoria and is a private person, not an influencer, you would never know anyway. And so you would be accidentally using the wrong sex pronoun without knowing it. And does that make them the opposite sex magically? No, it doesn't. Keto and crime. Hello, Tracy says, I call you what you present as unless you tell me different. I would look really dumb saying he to Blair. Yeah, I just, I'm not going to do it. It's, it doesn't come naturally to me. So <clears throat> Uh, note to self, don't get a Facebook account. Yeah, <laughs> you, it's probably, it's probably not a good idea to get one at this point if you don't already have one. Um, pathetic hermetic, swapping one tyranny for another isn't the best thing to do. Yeah, this is exactly why this vocal minority in the gender critical crowd bothers me so much. Because they're authoritarians. They're just like the, the TRAs, the trans rights activists. They're just like the woke. They they would, if they could, they would compel the very words that come out of my mouth. They would, and yours and everyone else's. And sometimes people say, I've seen people say, I don't like the infighting <clears throat> and we're all on the same side. And I'm like, uh, I'm not on the same side with you just because you agree with me in, in a singular position on something. No, Um I'm not on your side, if whatever that side, I'm not on the side of people who engage in cancel culture, who uh, bully others, who harass others, who are controlling, who exhibit personality disordered behavior. Um, I don't care if you speak some of the same opinions that I do. We're not on the same side. And let's say we achieved a mutual goal, that we had a shared goal that we achieved, like let's take a small one, let's say banning uh, transgender surgeries for kids in Texas. Let's say we were on the same page on that issue and we achieved that goal. Well, once we've moved past that goal, I mean, just like, just like a communist, you know, you, that type of person, that type of personality disorder person, that controlling person, as soon as your shared goal is met, they're going to find something else and then you're going to be the one they're stabbing in the back. You're going to be the one that they're doing away with and getting rid of, or is, is now a problem. I mean, they, they are the same. they have the same character defects as the woke. They are tyrants. So anybody who exhibits that behavior, I don't care if it's in my real life or online, I don't want you near me. I've, I've already left one very controlling cult. I left the cult of woke and social justice where I, you know, you're told what you can and can't say, what your language is. You start to self-police. You're policed within the group and then you have a self-censor. I don't ever want to be in a group like that again. I don't ever want to alter my language for fear of what people who are supposed to be my allies will think of me. I shouldn't have fear of my ally allies. So I don't want you near me. I've already left a cult like that. I've also, unfortunately, like many of us, had to deal with controlling people, narcissistic people, borderline personality disorder people. I've, I've, I've endured some of these people in my life. I don't want to endure any more of them. And I might be a bit hypersensitive towards it now, but if someone shows red flags of that kind of controlling behavior, whether it's real life or online, get away from me. I don't want you anywhere near me. I don't care if we have the same opinions on some things. I don't think you're a good person. <laughs> like, so that's it. Mal's red guard was a controlling cult, says Dan. Yeah. 
Kevin says the issue isn't so much any individual, it's compelled speech and forced teaming. Yes, this is what I, I abhor it. I hate the forced teaming. And that's what these people were trying to do. Telling on me to Birdie and then threatening to tell on Birdie to Kelly Jean Keen. And it's forced teaming. It's you will do this or I will end you kind of thinking. Gross. Get away. Keto and crying. Blair says she isn't a woman. She calls herself a trans woman. Yes. So does my friend Sarah Higdon. You know, again, I will only use it if the person is aware. I know that they are aware that they are not actually the opposite sex, that they have a mental disorder that used to be called gender dysphoria, um, and that they're not under any illusion that they've changed their biological sex, you know. So. ADL 1992. Thank you for the dollar 99 super chat. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out today. Super based. I love your avatar. Super based gifted 5G program memberships today. And so did yarn, Witch. thank you guys so much. Thanks. Uh, welcome to the new newly minted members here at the channel. Andrew Joyner says, I think Megan Murphy, queen of the turf, said she would use pronouns in private, but in public, she said it had wider implications or something. I've interviewed Megan before. I've been on some panels with her, and I'm not sure what her position is. I don't know if you're right about that or not, but um, but yeah, it's a personal, my words are my choice. So I think that's it. This is going to be a short one. We're good. It's only 47 minutes. We're good. <laughs> what else should we talk about? Do you guys want to see the office? Would that be good? Let me get rid of this. Oh no. I was trying to remove that. If you want to see the office, let me know. I think I can take this camera down there. Um, Davina says, yes, show us the office. Okay. Let's see. It has been, my husband and I were talking, we're trying to figure out the timeline. It's been eight weeks, I think, that we've been working on it diligently. And that's not including the time it took him and our friend to remove the chimney previously. So it's been a long time. Um, I think, I think this will work if I, um, in, enter studio. Enter studio. Okay. 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 Hold, on. Hold on. Hold on. That's weird. There are two of me. <laughs> okay. Now don't, can you hear me? Is the audio working? Don't freak out when you see the mess in this house because we are renovating. So we've had to move. Every time we do a room, I have to move things to other rooms. So there's piles of books here that are going to go in the bookshelves. And there's, you will see some piles of things. Um, but if you can hear me, audio is working. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to try and take this down then. Um, we'll see. Uh, this is our staircase, which, well, since I'm here, I'll just show you this. So the whole upstairs is shiplap. Um, they never sheetrocked up here. And we're going to be keeping a lot of the shiplap in that main sitting area where I've been temporarily streaming. Um, but here behind me, you can see that they sheetrocked the downstairs and then they just kind of stopped. And there's a ledge here where the sheetrock cuts off. So our plans for this wall, when we finally get to this common area and the staircase is we are going to continue the shiplap up just so we have consistency and we'll have just this one white wall that I would like to cover with gold mirrors. This is my vision for this wall. I don't know. Anthony and I are still talking about it, but then the rest of the upstairs will stay shiplap, which I think, I think that would look good. I can't see your comments. So if you have questions, I'll have to answer them. Oh, wait, wait, I think I can chat. Oh, I think I can see them now. Okay. So if you have questions, I think. 
Um, I think I can see them. Okay. Anyway, so <clears throat> this room is my office. So it's the first room when you come down the stairs and we removed the door. We removed the door because we had to fit some stuff through here. So we haven't put it back yet, but this is currently what it looks like. Now we just started putting some furniture in there and, um, but we haven't really, it's not permanently where everything's going to be yet because we have a couple things to finish. So these floors, um, they're got dusty footprints on them now, but this was the last thing I did in here. Um, stained it, two coats of varnish. Uh, let's see what else. This is going to be, well, I guess I should get back. This big old table we found on Facebook Marketplace for only, I think it was like $80. It's a big, beautiful, solid wood dining table. But uh, that's going to be the desk because I wanted a big space so people can sit at the table if I have guests. Um, but also uh, we've got this chair. Can you see that back there? And then this is the radio. Uh, this, oh, this bookcase. I'm, I'm pretty proud of the bookcase. So we found this at a thrift shop for only $38. And it was all beat up and had nails coming out of it because it's handmade. <clears throat> and so we took the nails off the back, off the side where they were poking out. Anthony did that, sanded it and then painted it and put it back on it. So there's, uh, I think that's where the bookcase is going to go. And then I'll show you the cool stuff in here. This is the radio that my friend worked on. This is a 1937 Grunau. And like I said, they called these the Shirley Temple radio because she was in the first advertisements for these and it does work. Um, but I, I've got a, I can, I can also, I have a Bluetooth adapter in it so I can pick up a few radio stations around here, but then also we can, we can use Bluetooth to listen to stuff. And then this lamp, I just found, I love this lamp. Uh, I don't know if you can see the base of it. So this is, um, here, you see that light at the bottom, which is cool. That light still works. The clock works. And these were called ashtray lamps. And I started looking them up and there's all kinds of ashtray lamps and they all have a clock like this. And the, and, um, this one looks like a, somebody said it looks like a Dali painting cause it's all hanging over like that. I can straighten it up or leave that way. I'm going to try and find one of the old uh, period specific uh, shades that goes on it. Um, you can see tiger here on the couch. <laughs> um, and then this is what's over here. Another, another older lamp. Um, that's going to be a place for storage. And this is, the I think this is the chandelier we're gonna hang here, which you can see the bottom. I love this one. Uh, this is probably 1930s period, but I got this one for cheap because it doesn't have a chain or it doesn't have and it doesn't have the the base, the thing that you connect it to the ceiling with. So I have to find that find a chain to to hook it up. So I think. That's it. And then on the table here, oh, these are some of the art. I was trying to figure out what art's going in this room. But back here, behind the desk, that's going to be the background. Probably going to have add some art back there. Uh, or we did have a fireplace we took out. Oh, I should tell you that. So behind this chair, this whole wall here was, there was a chimney and a mantle and we took it out because we have another double-sided fireplace already and this one was crumbling a little and we needed the wall space here and upstairs in the bedroom so we took that that was the biggest job anthony and our friend took that chimney out and then they also you can see here on the floor um they patched the floor so it's not you, you can see where the patch is. We also had to make new baseboards here um, and put those in. So I still have caulking to do on those. And I still have 
Um, I'm trying to think what else. Caulking. Oh, and we have to add the electrical outlet. So, so that's it. But this is going to be the chair. Okay. This was a bit um, weird trying to do it like this, but I hope it was okay. Should we go back up and see? That's easier. That's easier. Let's just go back up. So. I don't know if I can turn this camera the other way. I don't have a selfie stick, so I don't know if that worked well or you could even see it or is it too shaky? <laughs> uh, I need to get a selfie stick in addition to a new camera. Less shaky cam is good. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Robert Lowry's here. Give it up for Robert, one of our mods. Robert, you and I should get together and talk about the tech that I need uh, in addition to in addition to a camera, I know I need something to do remote things with like that. I can't just take the phone. I'm not practiced at that. I'm not good at that. Dan, this house has much legit character. Thank you. I think so too. And so even though it's taken so long, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I kind of view it as, yes, we work, we work on this house a lot. It's almost a full-time job working on this house when we're in the renovating mode, but it's basically a work of art that I get to live in. We get to live in it. And I love that. I love waking up in, in my house every day. I love the, the, the bedroom we finished and, and I can't wait for the office because so long when I was in that room, you couldn't see the rest of it. You could just see what was behind me, but it was just peeling wallpaper, all the stacks of stuff that are up here now were down there in that room stacks from other like lumber and stuff that we've taken off of door frames and um it you know all the junk that currently is in that room that uh there's a sideboard in there that we're going to turn into a double sink there's all kinds of lumber there's a tub there's you know things like that anyway there was a bunch of stuff down there there was there was soundproofing material for my husband's office and it was just a big clutter pile. And so I didn't feel good being in there. Even though I streamed from there, I didn't want to go in there and write. I didn't want to go in there. It didn't feel like a comfortable office because it wasn't. It was just a storage room while we worked on other rooms in the house. So to have this time to have my husband say, let's book, let's bump your office up on the list. Let's do that one sooner rather than later. And it's just been a blessing to get it done because even though it's not completely finished yet, we're at the final stretch down there now. And when I walk in that room, I know I feel this is a room I'm going to want to do the things I'm supposed to do in this room. I'm going to uh, not just podcast, make videos, but write and have friends over and socialize in that room. And it's going to feel great. So uh, it's all going to be worth it. And it, it's probably going to take us realistically given how much time it's taking us to do each room, I know this is a years long project. And because it, it's not just a matter of time for us having the time to do a room, but also money, we have to save money in between each room. So the last room that we renovated was a year ago. That was our bedroom. And then it took us a year, we save up money and then we'll do, we'll tackle another couple of rooms. So after this, uh, after we finish my office, which is almost done, we've budgeted enough to do the kitchen and uh, I can't wait to get the kitchen done. We're going to do the kitchen next. So that'll probably be another eight or nine week project. And then we also are taking out a loan to be able to do the exterior of the house because the exterior is, we can't put it off any longer. So we were hoping to, but it's, it needs to be done. So we've got a company that's going to help us with the exterior and uh, those two things we're doing. And then we'll probably take another break for a year or something to save money again. That's, that's just what I think is probably, probably going to happen. <clears throat> Focus on the most important projects first. Yeah. That's why things keep get, getting moved around on the list. Cause 
I kind of, I was thinking, oh, this is fine. I can just podcast from this room with all this stuff. And it's not important. Let's put all the other rooms first. But after a while, it was sort of, it became obvious that it was a very important room and we needed to do it. The next important room is the kitchen. Anthony's really loving doing baking and we have to, we have to get a good kitchen that's easy to use right now. We can cook in there. It's just, you don't want to, you know. Uh, let's see what else time is. The squatting raccoon. Look, dude, when we do the exterior, Adam, we're going to find out what's in the walls. I think it's cats now, but I heard him just today right here in this wall. <laughs> what time is it? It's time for a lucky strike doll. Pour me a bourbon. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, I kind of want it to feel, I love old houses. I love old things, obviously antiques. And and I want it to feel when you step in the room, it's you're stepping back in time a little bit, you know. The radio is great. Yeah, I love putting it on. And um, and sometimes people, hey, look, if you want to, if you want to get into having older furniture, because whenever I get excited about something like that lamp that I found and post it, I'll have people commenting, oh, I would love one of those. Or, you know, but some people think it's expensive to get antiques and it can be, but I'll tell you this. Some some of you already know this, but those of you who don't, I'll just I'll tell you this. You can find antiques for not very much money. You just have to know where to look and you have to be patient and you can't just buy the first thing that you see that you like if it's got a crazy price so for example that beautiful antique lamp that that is still working in the clockworks and everything that lamp was less than the price of a brand new floor lamp from target okay so it's just a matter of what you're going to spend it on and Currently, for some reason, there is an antique explosion happening in the marketplace. People are unloading their family heirlooms. It's kind of sad, actually, because you if you go to Facebook Marketplace, and not just where I live, because trust me, I look all around the country on Facebook Marketplace. Sometimes if I'm looking for something specific, I just I'm like, well, if it's in if it's in Wisconsin, maybe I'll drive there. <laughs> like I'll look and then I'll see something and I shouldn't do that. Cause I get sad. Cause I can't, I can't actually drive there for, for, for an antique, but, um, but it's all around the country. If you look on Facebook marketplace, people are unloading the most beautiful, beautiful family heirlooms. There are, uh, sideboards and cabinets. I've seen antique French cabinets and, and, beautiful mirrors and, um, uh, you know, lamps like this and just all kinds of antiques for crazy good prices. They're going to be better prices. You can find better prices on Facebook marketplace because it hasn't hit the antique store yet. You're not buying it from a middleman who's got to mark it up further. They're selling it directly to you from their living room. And so you can find better prices. There are still people who put antique store prices on their stuff. And I just, you just don't look at those because you don't want to fall in love with those. Keep looking. You will find good deals. Um, so if if you want to start looking for old stuff, do it now. It is sad. Yeah, everybody's saying that makes me sad. Me too. And I'm I'm the kind of person, Dion, I want to buy all of the beautiful old things that people are selling because I'm like, it needs to go to a good home. Who's going to take care of it? <laughs> like, I need to, I need to take that. And uh, I have to stop myself from doing that because I don't want to become a hoarder. So, you know, my dream is one day I go to so many antique shops in Texas and all around. Um, I found that one in Belton, Texas, that lamp. But I have my favorite shops in Georgetown, Round Rock, uh, Taylor, Temple, Belton, Comfort. We were just in a great one yesterday uh, it, on the way to uh, Fredericksburg. There's, there are great shops everywhere. And my dream, if I could share my dream with you, is to one day own my own antique shop like that. I want to have an old, just a place full of old, beautiful things. And I think that would be the perfect job because you get to be around all the beautiful antiques every day and you get to find good homes for them. And so anyway, we'll see. Knock on wood. That's my goal. 
nerdy girl says it makes me sad too. Some people are minimalists and they don't want any of their family stuff. Yeah, that's I think that's also part of what's happening. There's a lot of minimalists. There's a lot of people getting rid of. I noticed this in Germany. Uh, our friend was saying uh, she was saying you know here in Germany nobody wants antiques. They want new things, minimalist things, IKEA things. And so she said, you know, you can find beautiful antiques for free on the corn street corners here. And lo and behold, that week while we were staying with this this friend, we saw a beautiful antique on the corner for free. I mean, so I thought at first, oh, well, that's just Germany. But no, I think something similar is happening here in the States as well, because the prices are getting much better and there's a the marketplace is being flooded with with antiques. Um the other thing about old, old, beautiful, they're not just more beautiful. I mean, somebody said to me about that lamp that I, I shared a picture of it. They said, why aren't, why aren't things beautiful and enchanted anymore when we make products now like lamps or furniture? And we've, a lot of our, the stuff that we live around, the objects that we place in our home, the modern ones have become disenchanted. They're just about function. They're just about function. They're not about form and beauty. and so one benefit of the older having older things around your house is that they're they're more beautiful and enchanted but also they are built to last they're not cork board i mean they're real wood you know that even that old bookshelf that we rehabbed that's solid wood bookshelf and um the appliances were built to last i mean the i have a mixer that anthony's been using a lot lately it's one of the old sunbeam mixers from the 60s. I mean, that thing's a tank. That thing works great and it's beautiful. And so we build things differently now. Dion says, what they don't realize is that these things are art and soon the ability to make these will be lost. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad about that. I hope that doesn't come to pass. solid wood that isn't going to warp exactly let me see if i missed anything else you need enough space to warehouse and display says davina yeah i do i've 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 been thinking about it i mean there's a lot of these cool places in texas town like elgin has a place that elgin texas that is very cool it's kind of what i would want to do and there's a place kind of like this in georgetown too where um it's a music venue slash antique store and bar. Texas does this a lot. I don't know if they do this in other states. I'm sure they do. But one of the places I think of that I would like to have a place like this is the place in Elgin. And it's amazing. You go in and the front half is all antiques, just beautiful things. And the back half, there's a little wine bar and coffee bar there with a stage and they have live music. And I've thought, this is what I would like to have, a place like this where there's live music and, you know, we do the house concerts, concerts now in our home, but wouldn't it be great if we had a venue where we could do concerts and then also I could sell, I could do my dream <laughs> and have antiques there too. <laughs> yeah. T Texas Sheep Lady says the bar pays for selling the antiques. Yes. And also, in my experience, it helps to sell the antiques because back when I was a drinker, before I got sober, if I went to one of these places and I had a little bit of wine in me, then I'd be more likely to buy. <laughs> so I'm like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dion says, my immersion blender was my great aunt and it's from the 1960s. Yeah, and I, I bet it works great. Okay. Come for the music, buy some stuff. Yes, that's what'll happen, Robert. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap this up. It's kind of a, a fun stream showing you a little bit of the office at the end. And thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me try and articulate my thoughts about compelled speech, speech policing, and pronouns. If you felt that I wasn't uh, articulate about it, if you or that I wasn't very clear or concise, let me know in the comments. 
um, what I could explain better. Or if you have questions or if you disagree, let me know you disagree. I want to be clear. I'm not saying you can't disagree with me and, and vehemently feel free. I have friends who do. I just, I don't like being told what I have to say. That's it. So thank you guys very much. Um, I'll let you know when we're doing pop culture and, but it's going to be sometime this week. Mr. Chris is back and I've missed him and can't wait to see him. And I'll let you know when that's going to happen. Take care.